So I started coming to We Care Arts probably a year or so before the pandemic. Um, I have lived with depression and increasing levels of anxiety my entire adult life. The anxiety morphed into a panic disorder. And so pre-pandemic, I was already feeling a little bit too much like I just wanted to stay home and hide in a blanket fort. Um, I liked the pandemic a lot for the lack of requirement to interact with other humans. And my prescribing psychiatrist thought that I was a little too comfortable being alone. So he recommended that I come here and I'm not sure that I'm really like a lot of the other clients here because I, I have an extensive background in art. You know, I studied art in college, I studied art history. I've been in some way or another working as an artist my entire adult life. So where it, it often feels like many of the people come to art through We Care Arts, I came to We Care Arts because my doctor thought it would be a good idea for me to interact with other people and he thought I would be comfortable interacting about art more than almost anything else. Um, I consider myself a storyteller. I've been doing live storytelling events for about eight years now, um, which you'd think somebody with anxiety and a panic dis disorder would be uncomfortable getting on stage in front of a microphone, telling stories about their life. But when you don't see the audience and, and there are spotlights on you so you can't see the audience, it's a little easier. Um, and usually I'm telling a story that's specifically about a subject, so I don't have to really try and interact as much, you know, just put something out there and, and in front of people. And in a lot of ways, that's what I'm doing with my artwork too. So it just feels like everything I do is in some way a form of storytelling. Some really wonderful people. Um, I, you know, the accountability of having some place that I'm supposed to be where I, my presence is noticed or missed. Um, this is why having a home studio never really worked for me because it was really easy for me to decide, I'm just gonna hang out with the cats under the blankets and, and you know, I can, I can do that tomorrow. Coming here means that, you know, I have a schedule that I'm supposed to be here. There is a time I'm supposed to arrive and a time I'm supposed to leave and if, if for some reason I'm not going to be here, there's, you know, I have to notify people. It's a lot more responsibility and accountability than I was really keeping for myself before that. And with the mental and emotional stresses of my particular mental illness, that's helpful and useful and probably productive. I really love the Kella Lily piece that I did for the gala this year. Um, I've been reading so much about AI and how AI was going to kill art, you know, it was going to make artists irrelevant and all this other stuff. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's a, a tool, a potential tool. You know, and something that you can use to make your life easier as an artist, whether it's using it for drafting purposes, to, to kind of play with different layouts, or, you know, any number of ways that you can use AI to do sort of the groundwork for the actual art piece that you're going to make. Um, you know, I think people worry too much that it's a way that people can make art without any real effort or talent or skill. And I mean, there are so many ways that people can do that. I mean, they said that about photography when the camera was invented, that, you know, artists would be irrelevant, that, you know, you don't need to have any skill to press a button. I dare you to walk up to a photographer and tell them that. <laughs> so, you know, I wanted to play with the idea of AI as a tool in, you know, in my toolbox as opposed to a way of executing art that made things easier. Um, you know, 
I, I always tell people if you can write your name and someone can read it, then you can draw. Because when you write, when you make letters, you are actually drawing symbols that people recognize. It's effortless and you don't think about it because you've been doing it your whole life and it requires no thought because you have so much practice. Most of us get this idea in our heads that you have to have talent to draw. And it's, it's a skill like anything else. And you know, it's a skill that builds upon itself and the more you practice, the more skill you have. Um, and you know, the most successful artists may not be the most talented. They may just be the most determined. It's one of the things I love about being at We Care Arts is that I see so many very determined artists who are really working at the best of their abilities in spite of, you know, any question about whether they have talent to back it up or not. They, they make art and they do it and they keep doing it and that's what's important.